We are in float mode. Yeah, 53.6 volts. That's my float voltage. Welcome back to another episode here from the off grid garage in sunny, hot Australia. 32 degrees Celsius outside today. Just left winter time. It's insane warm already. Well, and today, or actually since yesterday, with a little experiment again, what else do you expect from here? Charging the battery to 3.4 volts only, but this time with absorption. Remember a few episodes back, I charged to 3.4 volt and stopped charging then, or I had only a very small absorption time of 15 minutes or so, and this was clearly not enough. So I ended up with 70% state of charge on one day, and the next day it was 80% state of charge. Because 3.4 volt is still in the flat linear area of the curve, it's just before we take off to the steeper area of the curve, there is no defined spot where we stop. So the state of charge is different every day. Well, depending what kind of state the battery is in, how much it has already absorbed during the day, how fast we have charged, how slow we have charged, all these in combination make up the state of charge if you charge to 3.4 volts. So many people have commented and said, uh, you need to absorb. Yes, I, I knew that before. I just wanted to confirm what we have learned before from a single cell test here with the tester. And well, it is now confirmed. The battery doesn't charge consistently to 3.4 volts. So now this time I played around with the absorption time and also the tail current. If you don't know what a tail current is, this is something you can set up in some of your solar charge controllers. It basically is another trigger point to leave absorption voltage and go into float. So you can either say I'm absorbing for two hours or if the current goes under five amps, I call it as well. So either of these trigger points can be true and the solar charge controller will leave the absorption state and lower the voltage to the float voltage you have set. So, and if we have a look here in the solar charge controller now, you can see the absorption voltage is set to 54.4 volts, which is 3.4 per cell times 16, 54.4. And then we go into float mode 53.6, which is uh, 3.375, no, 3.35, sorry, 3.35. It's, it's up here on the screen, too many numbers. And the absorption time I set to four hours. So from the initial 15 minutes we had, which was far too short, I set it to four hours. So tail current was turned off and I set this to five amps. So whatever you reach first, the solar charge controller will switch from, from absorption to float. Okay, and then we had a bit of a crazy weather situation now. It's blue blue sky now outside. A uh, bit of crazy situation. We had lots of thick clouds moving across the sky and the sun came and went. And we had a lot of these cloud corner edge cases, you know, when the sun is behind the cloud and then all of a sudden, bang, it comes out and the solar panels are cold. And I have seen 60 amps outside today for the first time, 60 amps. So both solar charge controllers were almost at the maximum current they can supply to the battery. I've never seen this before. It is early springtime down here, so <laughs> I got a rough idea what to expect in summertime then here. Yeah, I just checked again. I've taken this photo at 1150, 10 to 12, and we can already see we have just reached absorption voltage of 54.4 volts. And we had the discussion before and people said, well, if it hits the absorption voltage only for a short moment and then it falls below the absorption voltage again, it will not trigger the absorption time. Well, this is not true for Victron gear apparently, because as you can see, I have just hit the 54.4 volts at 68% state of charge. Yeah, one of these corner cloud cases 2.3 kilowatt into the battery and it switched to absorption and it did not leave the absorption phase at all since four o'clock since I came home and now it's in float. It stayed, I checked, I checked all the time at work on the mobile phone. I know I shouldn't say I checked multiple times at work on the mobile phone and it was always in absorption. Even the voltage was lower under 53 during midday. Actually, it was pretty cloudy. And 
well, there was almost no sun at all for half an hour or so. And yeah, and sometimes the clouds were so thick. You can see it from this screenshot here. I charged only with 500 watts in the middle of the day. And have a look at this clip I recorded here. You can see we are now charging with 1100 watts. This is just the Westroof solar charge controller I'm monitoring here. And you can see the power, 1.5 kilowatts. Yeah, we are charging and then it goes down 800. Cloud comes 700. And all of a sudden, bang, it jumps to 1200, 1500, 1600 watts again. And then it goes down again. And we had this all morning long. And with one of these cases, you can see the voltage here as well, 54.3 at this point of time. Just watch the voltage. Let me go down. 700 watts, 900. Look at the voltage. Have you seen that? How it jumps? 54.1. Just watch that. 400 watts only. Voltage goes down. Just wait for it. Wait for it. Five hundred, six hundred, sun comes back, seven, nine hundred, eleven hundred, look at the voltage, look at the battery voltage, fifty four point four, there it is, there it is, for example, triggered fifty four point five, this would trigger the absorption time already, and we had this all day long, all morning long for hours and hours, sun is coming, sun is going, seventeen hundred watts, look at this, and then eleven hundred, bang, goes away, seven hundred, nine hundred. And this is exactly what I said in my other video when I said, well, 4.4 point, 4 point, um, 4 point, uh, 3.4 point volt is not enough. When you have these cloud corner situations, it, it, the voltage in your battery peaks because there's so much power coming in all of a sudden and you hit the 54.4 volts and then it starts the timer for the absorption time. And in the video before, we had absorption time of 15 minutes and then it reduced the voltage to 53.6 only and that's why the battery ended up with only 70 or 80 percent state of charge well that's why i set it to four hours today i said well if this hits early which it did we have enough time to still charge the battery well we did it's on 93 percent but i think well it's running for an hour almost now on float with a lower voltage if we wouldn't have this situation, and I would have probably put in six hours or seven hours of absorption time, the battery may be a little bit fuller now. And if we have another look at the video here I took from the mobile phone, look at the current here going into the battery when I go forward and backwards here. Here, look at this, 7.8 amps we have only in the battery. So if I, if I program a take current of 10 amps, for example, and we are going to down to 7.8, the solar charge controller thinks, well, the battery is full, it doesn't take any current anymore, right? So it turns off into float, which is totally wrong because the battery is not nearly full at all. But these are the two trigger points you can set in your solar charge controller, absorption time and tail current. And unfortunately, even the Victron Smart Chant and the Victron Solar Charge Controllers, they form a Bluetooth network, so they talk to each other. So the charge controllers know exactly what voltage we have in the battery and it compensates for all the cables and everything. But the Smart Chant does not submit the state of charge to the solar charge controllers, unfortunately. And I don't know why they are not doing this. It would be easy yeah, I just think these two trigger points are not enough to make a precise call to stop absorbing and go into float mode. It is not enough. Well, so guys, the exercise was, or the exercise still is, to keep the voltage as low as possible but still fully charge the battery. And this is what happens at 3.4 volts with 4 hours of absorption time and a set tail current. The clouds are fooling your settings. The clouds are telling the solar charge controllers, well, the battery is full, we have reached the voltage, or we, have, or we are just cutting under the threshold of your tail current, and we can go into float because the battery is full. So I'll try again tomorrow and just increase the absorption time a little bit more. But then again, how much absorption time do you get? Do you give it, you know? 
because this situation could happen in early in the morning at 7.30 and you trigger the absorption time. So you would end up with sitting a 10 hour absorption time or something ridiculous long over the whole day because you never know when this trigger happens. Look, I don't, I don't really know if this is the way to go, but I think if you charge to a 3.45 volts, just 50 millivolt higher, you will have a defined point to stop charging then. Because 3.45 is just when the curve takes off. Before we go into this deep area, but it's a defined point. You remember maybe the video when I showed this graph when I charged with different currents to the same voltage. And at 3.45 volts, we could see a consistent charging stop. Almost consistent, regardless how much amps we put into the battery during the test. If we charge slow or fast, they all stopped almost at the same state of charge, which was not the case at 3.4 volts. If I don't forget, I'll link this video down in the description again. And there's also the graph with the data of all our tests linked down below. Okay, guys, I think I... Um, change the absorption time now from four hours to six hours for tomorrow and see how we go. I almost expect the weather will be totally different tomorrow and it will just work. But who knows, maybe I'm wrong. I will be at work again. So if I see something interesting, I hit the record button on the mobile phone. At least I capture the interesting moments then. Okay guys, as always, thank you so much for watching. Thanks for all your support here on the channel, all your donations. And until the next video guys, stay charged and stay safe. And thank you for watching again. See you then. Bye-bye. Well, guys, before you go, before you go, if you want to charge to a 90 or 93 or 95% only, not to 100%, this is probably the way to go. Charge to 3.4 volts and then play with the absorption time. Have a look at your smart shunt. Have a look at your BMS, which has a built-in smart shunt. And you can read the state of charge. You know exactly how much ampere hours are missing until full, or it tells you the state of charge in a percentage value there. And you can set the absorption time then precisely, and it should kind of work. You still have a variation in this setup, because if you have clouds, you've got a different behavior of your system than if you have full sunshine. It all depends. But this would be a possibility if you say, I want to charge to 90% only because this is the recommendation of the manufacturer of these batteries. They always recommend to charge from 10 to 90%. Use the battery with the 80% depth of discharge only. Well, the absorption time and the tail current may be your friend to get this done. But it is a lot of fine tuning. And I think you have to change the settings depending on your season weather conditions and other factors maybe as well. So I think it's still almost impossible to to charge to 93% consistently. Well, we talked about this before. We have seen all the comments under these videos. It is not necessary to charge to 90 or 93 or 95% only. You can charge these batteries to 98, 99%. You should not charge to 100%, but 99 is still okay if you keep the voltage down. All right, guys. See you tomorrow. Okay, okay, okay. Before you actually go... Really? I <laughs> just start the video. Before, you, before I let you go, I want to show you something. It is the next day now, but I think this is relevant to the video I just made before. We are still on 54.4 volts absorption. And we can see 73%. We are already absorbing. We have reached the 54.4 volt. You can see it on here. And we are charging with 2.6 three kilowatts. The charging current is 54.9. Relative constant at the moment. We've got noon time. Both solar strings are in full sun. If I go here and change the voltage to 55.4, just one volt higher. Look at the power, look at the current. Look at this. So I would actually get more power out of my solar panels and would put more current into the battery if I raise the voltage slightly. This is not a surprise, of course, but I just want to explain what happens here. We were at 54.4 volts before, which is constant voltage. So the charge controllers keep the battery at this voltage, regardless what the solar panels can get. And the current is already starting to taper off. This is the absorption phase. 
We keep the voltage constant and the current goes down. So if you charge to only 3.4 volt per cell, you may limit your power coming in from the solar. You could potentially get more power, you charge your batteries quicker. Makes sense, right? The lower we set the absorption voltage, the earlier this effect kicks in. And we are not using the full potential of our solar anymore. This is especially visible now at noontime when you have maximum solar input. That's 2 amps, so around 100 watts more if we increase the voltage slightly. So I still think 3.4 volts is a bit too low to charge to. Even I have now set 6 hours of absorption time, I still think it is a bit too low. We are at 74% state of charge now and we can see again it is inconsistent. Yeah, we had 70 before, we had 80% before and now we've got 74. So it is inconsistent depending on how much the batteries have already saturated during the day until you hit the absorption voltage. And I'm on absorption voltage for the last two hours or so now. And, and exactly this shows again what we have seen in the graph I made before when we tested different charging voltages with different currents. 3.4 is not consistent. So I think 3.45 volts with a very small or even no absorption time would be the ideal position, the ideal spot. But this is just me again mucking around with the settings here and see what's happening to understand what is going on with the battery, the solar charge controllers, the solar panels, the weather, the moon phase. And all these information are interesting and potentially important. All right, guys, see you in the next one. Bye. Guys, look what we have here. I think this is the first one of the season. A beautiful green tree frog. I think you should call this one um, Diego. There you go. Hello, Diego. <laughs> oh, is he trying to get into the can here? Let's see. Ah, I told you. He's going in. He's trying to hide. <laughs> oh. Yeah, he fits easily. <laughs> hey, Chico. <laughs> He's going in. Come on, come. You can do it. <laughs> That is amazing. There he is. <laughs> now you got your own pond here. <laughs>